Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is March the 1st in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, a few weeks back, I had asked if you would record a video of yourself, of your story, your journey, and email it to me at hayakadosh at yahoo.com. As of yet, I have not received any emails or any videos that I could place on the website that others could become familiar with you, be touched and blessed by your story, and be inspired by what you have to share with us all. However, I am very humbled and feel honored how the Lord Jesus is using our ministry throughout the world. I received a video of a ministry in Bangladesh. Now, I'm not sure how much you know about Bangladesh, but it is over 90% Muslim. And there is a native-born young man and his wife who have a ministry in Bangladesh in taking the message of the Lord Jesus to all those who would listen. And in this video, and I will be sharing this with you in the coming days. I just cannot get it uploaded right now. I'm having some difficulties. But in this video, they're actually playing these videos from Haya Kadosh Ministries on a large screen through a projector to 30 to 50 former Muslims who are now learning about the Lord Jesus and the holy precious word of God. And they are so hungry, and they want to better understand the Word of God, the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this young man and his wife, Redoy and Shipra, are using this in their ministry, which is titled Intermediate Leadership Training. And so from a small home in Durango, Colorado, Jesus is taking our videos across the world and lives are truly being touched. And so I just want to pause for a moment and say hi to everyone in Bangladesh. And we are so thankful that you have become a member of the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to let you know that I love you and that I care about you and I pray for you each and every day. And I am so humbled that I can bring to you the word of God. And yet this deepens within me a commitment to stay true to the unadulterated, uncompromising word of God. So that I will be faithful to present the word of God to you and others, staying as true and faithful to its teachings so that you can grow in your knowledge of the Bible and you can become more faithful servants of the Lord Jesus Christ there in Bangladesh so you can truly change the world in which you live by what you are learning. So again, I just want to say hello to each and every one of you. I love you, and I am so thankful to be a part of your school of ministry and to help you be more faithful in your service to King Jesus. Well, with that being said, we are continuing our study in the book of James today, and we find ourselves picking up in verse 17. Well, actually, let's begin at verse 16. Now, James says, do not err, do not deceive yourself. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death which means that we can deceive ourselves. We can truly think that we're doing all things right, and yet we can be oh so wrong. And so James is reminding us here not to deceive ourselves, but to understand that every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down 
from the Father of lights. Now let's talk about gifts for a moment. Because if we were to ask each of us how we would define that word gifts, we might find that we each have many different answers. Some would think of material possessions. Some might think of the spiritual gifts that are given us in the book of 1 Corinthians. But friends, if we are truly followers of the Lord Jesus, our greatest desire is not going to be things that are given us by this world, from this world, in this world, and they're not going to be manifestations that we can impart to others. More than anything, we're going to desire the things that the Holy Spirit does within us by changing our hearts. And what I mean by that is I can honestly say that I would rather have the abundant joy of the Lord that doesn't change based upon the circumstances of this life but is a continual, constant state of joy in the Lord whom we serve. I would rather have that than anything this world offers. And I would rather have that than any of the gifts that are spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So when we think about the gifts, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above I remember when my life was all about me. I was selfish. My ambition in life was self-centered. But I can also remember when I met the Lord Jesus, and in a moment of time, that changed. And my entire focus became about everyone else rather than myself. And I would rather have that gift more than anything that is discussed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 more than silver, more than gold, more than fame, fortune. I would rather have the peace of the Lord. I would rather be able to experience the inner workings of the Holy Spirit in my heart that gives me the character of the Lord Jesus and causes me to desire to be gentle, kind, patient, loving, caring, compassionate, I would rather have an intense drive to spend time in his word and stand for his truth. I would rather have a desire to pray than entertain myself. I would rather have a desire to serve others rather than spend all my time, energy, and effort focused upon myself, my own wants, my own desires, my own goals, and my own dreams. And so when we think about the gifts of God, friend, I would encourage you to focus upon these things, for these are the qualities that should be pursued. That's why Paul tells us, don't pursue these gifts, rather pursue love. Don't place all your emphasis on the outward manifestations of what you call gifts of the Spirit, but focus on the inner workings of the heart, the fruit of the Spirit. For what good does it do to have the tongues of angels to allow your body to be burned for the cause of Jesus Christ, yet you do not have love? And this tells us that there is a religiousness about these outward manifestations, these sacrifices that we make, and yet in doing all these things, we may not even have the love of Jesus in our hearts. I mean, look at what happened at 9-11. These men, because of their religious beliefs, flew those planes into those towers. But we know that they did not have the love of Jesus in their hearts, even though their sacrifice was great, even though their religious commitment was considered by some admirable. They lacked the love of Jesus because their focus was upon the wrong things. And so let our focus be upon the inner workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives and seek the gifts that come from this inner working. So every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights or the Father of illumination. It is God that illuminates the heart of a man. It is God that illuminates the mind of a man so that we can truly say, once I was blind, 
But praise God, now I see. It is the Holy Spirit that begins to reveal things within us that we've never known, we've never seen before. So God the Father gives us the perfect gift from heaven, but it is the Holy Spirit that unwraps that gift and allows us to see it, experience it, and enjoy it for all its beauty. And in the Father of lights, there is no variableness. There is no change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there is no shadow of turning within him. He is immovable. And it was by his will, his choosing, that he brought us into the family of God. And he did this by the word of truth. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we heard the message of salvation. We understood that we were sinners, that we had broken the law of God, that we stood being condemned, and yet Jesus paid our price so that we could walk out innocent. And it is this innocent that allows us to be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We go back to what he originally intended us to be. And at that moment of conversion, the truest moment, the moment when we were truly born again, we start out as babies in Christ, purely innocent before him. And if we remain faithful to all he is telling us, all he is teaching us, we will remain pure and innocent. But if we succumb to the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the devil, then we become spotted and we must go back to the Lord with confession and repentance. But it is very difficult for us to go on in our journey at that point because we still remember our failure, that we are no longer pure and innocent as we were at the moment of our new birth. But there is coming a day, friend, praise God, where all will be wiped away, where we will truly stand pure and innocent before the Lord. And all the things that have tainted our minds, including all of our failures, will no longer be remembered by us. And so there will be nothing that will stop us from serving the Lord our God with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our minds, and all of our strength. Yet we know in this life, so many of the failures that we have made, so many of the mistakes that we have made, although they can be used for God's glory, they limit us and hold us back from all that God truly desires of us. And it is for this reason that James says in verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved, let every man be swift to hear. Let every man be quick to consider. Think before he speaks. Because no matter how right we think we are, we are actually more wrong than we think we are. Paul said we are looking through a glass dimly. We think we see with clarity, yet our views have been obstructed by so many things that this world has blinded us to. That's why James is going to tell us in chapter 3, brothers, sisters, do not be many masters or teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. We are doing our best to teach the word of God, and we wrestle with and struggle with much of what we read. And yet, no matter how much we think we've got it figured out, we are still in error in some places in some of the things that we believe. And so let us spend more time considering than speaking. And when we do speak, let us not speak our opinions, but let us speak as the mouthpiece of God, understanding the responsibility of all that requires. Because if we go by our own opinions, our own thoughts, our own feelings, it's going to cause us to do things that dishonor God. We're going to place justice within our hands rather than understanding that God is the great revenger. For he said in his word, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so James says, be swift to hear, swift to consider, be slow to speak, and be slow to wrath. 
You may feel like it's your duty to impart justice, but be slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Now, wrath can be exhibited in many ways. It could be verbal wrath. It could be physical wrath. It could be vengeful wrath that doesn't express itself until a plan has been laid out and then sometime in the future it's carried out. But regardless of what form of wrath it is, God's righteousness is not expressed through men's wrath. And so let us be people of self-control, not acting on our emotions, not acting on our feelings. And let us be so focused upon this that we're not only giving attention to how it expresses itself once it explodes, but we are truly examining our hearts and ensuring that we don't even allow the spark of the first feeling of wrath to take place within our hearts. Because as we begin this study, our real consideration should be upon the inner working of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And if joy, love, kindness, goodness, gentleness, if, if these are the things that we're praying for, if these are the things that we're seeking, if these are the thing all of our focus is upon, then jealousy, anger, bitterness, and wrath are going to flee from us. They're not going to have a part in our souls. We're not going to make room for them because we have allowed the perfect gifts of God, the fruit of his spirit, to take residence in our hearts and to occupy every empty space, not allowing any room for the works of the flesh, the inner feelings of the flesh. And so I again encourage you to allow all your focus to be upon the perfect work of God in your heart, working out and manifesting itself through everything you say, everything you think, everything you do, and every way that you feel. And this is best done by the advice that James gives us in verse 19, is that we should be swift, quick to consider, slow to speak, slow to act. It's very much of what we were told when we were young children. Take a breath, count to 10, think before you speak, consider before you act. Because if we act in the moment, more times than not, friends, we're going to be wrong. We're going to have to go to God with confession and repentance, and we're going to have to go to the person whom we've wronged with confession and repentance. And so allow your hearts, your souls to ascend to the heights of heaven, to the glory of God. And like a magnet, be drawn to God, be drawn to his holiness, be drawn to his perfection, be drawn to his godliness. And spend every moment of your day pursuing these things. And then you will notice, one by one, these simple, evil works of the flesh begin to fall away and no longer have a part in you or of you. That's the work of Jesus, friends. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to transform us into new creations. With the same imagery, when that worm crawls into that cocoon and months later, that cocoon breaks open and he flies out a beautiful butterfly looking nothing like he was before. And so we too, friends, should be a new creation in Christ Jesus, looking nothing like the person that we were before. Well, may the Lord Jesus bless you today, friend. May he deepen your desire for the word of God. And as you read and contemplate and ponder what you have read, may you forever be changed into the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. And may your life be filled with his Holy Spirit, having room for nothing of this world. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.